Hi, Deadlock Sayer again with uh, another one of our videos. It's all about the handcuffs and teaching people how to escape from them. This week we've got some uh, more special escapes and more specialised to certain handcuff escapes. So, first of all, is the more uh, universal one. I say universal, it's not exactly universal. It doesn't work on all handcuffs, but it's alarming how many it does. So here's the question. All you have is a shim. And you need to get out of some double locked handcuffs. What do you do, Mrs. D? Whack it. Precisely. Whack it. it. As hard as you can. So what you have is you have the double lock bar across the bottom here, which uh, you will have seen in my first video uh, when I had the ESP mechanism in pieces. This doesn't actually work on the ESP so because the double lock bar is too light because it's made out of plastic. But the ones that are made out of metal, they have plenty of mass. Uh, if you, well, as you know, if something's moving quickly and it stops all of a sudden, and you think that's loose inside of it, like if uh, you're in a car without your seatbelt on, you're in an accident, your car stops quickly, you're going to carry on moving. It's the same theory with your double lock and bar. You move the cuff quickly, stop it suddenly, and the double lock and bar keeps moving. As you can see from that double lock window there, it is clear, so the double lock is on. I take this nice big chub cruiser here, and just, not quite. Not quite. There we go. And the double lock is off. Well, it's been crushed a little at some point. And when that happened. And again, to prove that it does work. On the other side, empty. Double lock is on. And Double lock off. Now, I would like to warn you about now if you try that with the cuffs on your wrist, it hurts a little bit. And you get large bruises. Yeah, if I've still got the picture, it will be in the vault here. Your girlfriend gives you no sympathy because you're a turnip and bashing yourself with a set of handcuffs on. At least I can say I can at least I can say I did it. <laughs> you broke your wrist doing it. Ah, it's fine, man. I suppose what's better having a broken wrist or being captured in handcuffs? Yeah, in uh, desperate situations I would advise doing it. If you have a way of picking off the double lock, I would advise you pick the double lock. Now we're going to move on to the high 1960s. Now, this is what the high 1960s look like inside. Very pretty. And as you can see, the lock and pole actually goes all the way around that circular area that uh, the key goes into. And you have this little bit sticking out here that. Uh, that actuates everything so if you turn it this way that sits here it stops the locking poles from moving down that is your double lock then if you turn it the other way it starts to push against the locking pole down here which lowers the locking pole which makes it so you can now undo the cuff now most of the time when people have been picking these have done it by uh, trying to push that bit that sticks out around because that's basically what the key does but now that we know what happens inside of there to be fair there's a lot of stuff here and uh, when this happens I usually cut it out so now that we know that those locking poles are all the way around this circle here, we know that all we really need to do is push something through here and push it down 
from the locking poles to push the locking poles down and we have an open which is much easier than trying to find that thing there and push it round and that makes it a lot harder and a lot more work to try and push that down so instead it's just simple Copyright. I might get in trouble for that. I don't care. It's a meerkat. They can sue me if they want. I mean, they're going to go to court with the meerkat. I don't think that's how it works. It works that way. The meerkats have to sue me. Okay, apparently the meerkat will come to court. Yep. And then I'll be like, I'm so sorry. And I'll ask for his autograph. I found a similar exploit with these uh, BRS. BRS3 these ones are. So the way I'm assuming these work, because my theory panned out, is you have the double locking bar across here at the bottom as normal. But then uh, everything is all a single direction turn with these ones to unlock and do the locking poles. So if you turn it, double locks off and keep turning and the pole is done. But if you look, when the locking pole goes, it is pushing on the double lock. So I figured, you have the double lock, then a piece of metal coming down here, which is attached to the locking pole, so when the double lock pushes against it, lowers the locking pole. So, if you get yourself a nice deep hook, then the bottom of the keyway there, all the way at the back, make sure you're right at the back, yeah, lean back, and there we open. Does what have a special name? Deep hook. Deep. Deep hook. Yeah. It's called a deep hook. But what did I call it? Um, I don't know. What did you call the deep hook? I don't know. I can't remember. It looks like that. It's just the one that goes all the way down. What's a dentist tool? Oh. Apparently this is a dentist tool. Yeah. To be fair, a dentist tool might work. You have a dentist on you now on Thursday. <laughs> what if if I can try escaping handcuffs with yeah. the dentist tools? I can't borrow these just for 20 minutes. Um, well, yeah, uh, I have to just stick them in the <laughs> if you uh, get the movement right, you can actually get the double lock and the lock and pull in one swift movement. So, there you go, we've got the double lock on, and swiftly round and we'll open. There's a nice little trick with the BRS3. Leaving two of my favourites to last now. Now he's Trimax. You're quite finished there. I just yawned. Uh -huh. It's been a busy day. Yeah, for you, not for me. Yeah, so I'm allowed to yawn. Yeah, not when I'm videoing. <laughs> anyway, these are Trimax handcuffs. Now, what they have done with these is, as you can see, you have the track in there, and that is because we have a split pole. Now, funny thing I noticed with this split pole is, if we find a key, a normal key, or I can find a split key, and the Kyung Chan key, I'm not putting the Kyung Chan key in there because that will not work right, them ones will do. Put the key in, it is a split pole, but a standard key works. But in making that standard key work, they also made the split move up and down with the poles. It was a bad idea. Because now, if you want, you can use your split shim and just dive straight in and you're out. Or if you want to do the special move, it turns out that that split in the middle, if you push that down, it actually pushes the locking poles down. <laughs> Which, as far as I'm concerned, is a fail. Because if you get any kind of wedge shaped thing like that, I've done this with bobby pins and all kinds of stuff. I, I think I've done it with this uh, Sparrow's Pokey thing does it as well, actually, I think. If you just put it down that track, which loads of stuff fits in there and work it in so you're on top of that uh, 
split in the middle it pushes the poles down and you're out I think uh, Thompson dropped the ball with that one now my favorite special escape oh no I'm not on the last one yet put these back put these back yeah I'm getting a bit ahead of myself sometimes glove companies decide to keep your hands really 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 far apart when that happens you need to have the ability to pick the cuff with the same hand that is cuffed by it like that now oh, that went alarmingly quick <laughs> I thought that was going to take more effort than that but yeah sometimes if uh, your hands are too far apart usually you would reach over and pick the other side but sometimes you have to kind of do it single-handed so uh, if you want to be good at escaping handcuffs something you might need to practice now on to my favorite yes dexterity now these handcuffs are genuine German handcuffs genuine, German. genuine were genuinely used by the German police for an amount of time I don't know how much Sometimes. Uh, maybe Coxie might put it in the comments I don't know because <laughs> he's the encyclopedia not me well the whack attack works on these I'm not really willing to do it because uh, these are probably older than me and are probably in better condition than me but once you've done the whack attack and got the double lock off if you push in the double lock slightly and then push in the bow a little bit it's open now what's happening here is basically when you push the bow in you're pushing the lock and poles down a bit now the upright on the double lock that stops the lock and poles coming down if you push the double lock in a touch pushes up against the side of the lock and pole if I'm getting that the right way around <laughs> which means once you've got the, ball, uh, the lock and pole down a bit and you've pushed the double lock in against the lock and pole it holds it down and out the way which means these handcuffs you can do a totally 100% no tool escape from them which uh, as far as I'm aware there's only two sets of handcuffs that have a floor that bad uh, I don't have the other set so I can't show you that But I think that about wraps it up for special escapes. Da -da -da. Wouldn't you agree, Mrs. Day? Sure thing. Can you think of any more? Not off the top of my head. Me neither. So we'll just say that's all from us. Uh, next week, it will be when handcuff companies get serious about security. We're going to go for some proper high security stuff. Explore how to get out of them a little bit. That's all from us. See you next time. Bye. The plan is we're going to lock the hasp. It shouldn't be called a hasp, so let's call it a terry. So we're going to lock terry. And uh, we're going to lock it with the master number three. I think it should be called Henry. Henry the hinge lock. It's a hasp. It's hinge lock now. Harry the hasp. It's Harry the hinge lock. <laughs>